What stood before me was no mere mirage. As the sand shifted beneath my feet, I witnessed the great sentinel cactus of the desert rise up as a giant among its kind. Frozen in both fear and awe of the creature before me, I was truly taken by surprise when it spoke. Welcome to Monster of the Week! Today we are going to be talking about the Guardian of the Desert, the Saguaro Sentinel. This creature is essentially a trent of the desert wasteland. But as you would expect, instead of being a massive living tree, it is in fact a massive living cactus. They're actually named after a real type of cactus, the Saguaro Cactus, which can grow to be really, really, really big. So having one of these monster cacti come to life as a living creature in your D&D setting kind of makes perfect sense. Like most awesome desert monsters, this guy can be found in Sandstorm, which is a book from 3rd edition. I really like all the ideas they present about this creature in the source book, but as always, we've got some changes to make to create a truly awesome monster. As is the case with Trents and most of their subtypes, when the Saguaro Sentinel remains completely motionless, it's indistinguishable from just a regular giant cactus. It may appear a little larger than normal, perhaps, but if it doesn't move, there shouldn't be anything else that will tip off your players. This ability, I find, is taken so for granted amongst these plant-based creatures, because yes, it allows them to get the drop on your players, so they're almost always gonna go first if combat breaks out, but it also allows for some really cool RP elements. While remaining motionless, the Saguaro Sentinel essentially gets to spy on your players, seeing if they're actually a threat to its home without them realizing it. If your players are genuinely being respectful to the nature around them, the Saguaro Sentinel will have no doubts that they are in fact respectable people, Whereas if it were to confront them first, it might be doubting their respect because who's going to try to mouth off to a giant cactus monster that's threatening to squish you? Now, the first big variation between the Trent and the Saguaro Sentinel, of course, is going to be its body. Unlike the Trent, the Saguaro Sentinel is a cactus, so it's covered in massive thorns. Any creature that strikes the Sentinel with an unarmed or natural attack is going to take damage as it's pierced by these huge thorns covering the creature's body. Fortunately for your players, however, these thorns aren't so long that they're going to take damage from just using a regular melee weapon. It's only if they try to punch the thing that they're actually going to get hurt. That said though, any monks in the party might have a bit of a rough go. Creatures who are forced into the sentinel are also going to take this damage, so if a creature is forced to make contact with the giant cactus by a spell or some other effect, they still get pierced. The most brutal application of this ability is if the sentinel actually manages to grapple someone, because not only is it taking the regular attack damage, but it's also being essentially skewered by all these spines covering its arms and hands. Another cactusy part of the Saguaro Sentinel's physiology is a trait called Tough Flesh. This ability will almost never come into play, but if it does, it will take the attacker by surprise. Because the Saguaro Sentinel has spent its entire life living as a cactus, soaking up all the water in the harshest conditions imaginable, it isn't affected the same way other plants are by spells that uh, cause dehydration and that sort of thing. For example, Abbey Delzim's Horrid Wilting, which causes extra damage and grants disadvantage to water elementals and plants, does not give disadvantage to the Saguaro Sentinel. The spell will still cause damage as regularly, but it doesn't get that extra kick because it's being used against a plant. Like I said, this is almost never going to come up because the spells that target plants and water elementals with such effects are so few and far between, and it's even less likely that you'll have a player in your game who has one of those spells prepared specifically during this encounter. But if it does come up, it's a neat bit of flavor, and like I said, it will catch them by surprise. Now, like any respectable huge plant monster, the Saguaro Sentinel can, of course, make two slam attacks every turn. Now, this is to be expected, of course, and no big monster would be complete without a couple devastating blows here or there. Unfortunately, though, this is kind of where things end, at least as far as the book is concerned. Seriously, this really actually kind of bummed me out, because I thought the concept was so cool, but it ultimately just ends up being a Trent with a slight variation and a couple neat flavor things. I looked at this monster and I really just thought to myself, what's the point of making a giant cactus monster if it can't shoot needles out of its body? I don't know, maybe I just watched too much Digimon as a kid or something. So, in the conversion I came up with, I gave our spiked friend here a ranged attack, which can target one creature up to 60 feet away, or 180 feet at disadvantage, 
with spikes that fly out of its body. I literally used the same damage for the Trent's rock throw attack in the 5th edition monster manual, so I think as far as CR balancing goes, this should be fine. I actually found it very weird that in the original source book for the Saguaro Sentinel, not only did it not have a spike attack, but it didn't have any ranged attacks at all. All it could really do was just punch stuff. So I think this kind of makes the encounter a little bit more interesting. The next ability I added in is essentially the same as the range attack I just mentioned, except the Saguaro Sentinel focuses all of its energy and unleashes all of its thorns at once in a 60 foot radius around itself. In doing so, it creates a storm of spikes that hurts everything in the area. This ability, however, does come with a drawback. It has a recharge time, and until it's recharged, creatures who touch it physically don't take that same piercing damage because it just jettisoned all its spikes at once at everything around it. I really like the narrative of this ability, just that it unleashes this torrent of spines damaging everything around it, but you can see the spines slowly starting to grow out of the creature once again, meaning that there's an opportunity to get in there up close and personal before it gains its full strength back. Rather than being a direct attack, I made this ability a dexterity save just to take half or full damage. I think if you have any monks in the group, this will actually help them feel less at a disadvantage in this encounter, because at first they're going to be thinking, oh man, I can't punch this thing, then all of a sudden it does this ability, they get to make their deck save, which they should be good at, they dodge all these needles, and then they get to get up close and do some real damage. Now the very last thing I added in that wasn't in the original book was the ability to animate trees, or in this case cacti. Once per day, just like the Trent in the Monster Manual, the Saguaro Sentinel can animate a cactus to act as its ally in battle. This ability literally reads exactly the same way as the Trent's ability does, but I feel like it's a signature ability for any forest guardian even if the forest you happen to be guarding is a forest of cacti and you're in the desert. I was actually really surprised it didn't just have this ability already. Now outside of combat, the Saguaro Sentinel continues to carve out a niche for itself in the desert. Like the Trent, it is dedicated to preserving nature and sees itself as a guardian who protects the little nature that exists out in the middle of the desert. However, unlike Trent's, they are not really concerned with the forces of good and evil. They are the isolationists of their kin. They live far out in the desert, and they're fairly removed from the daily trivial issues of mortals. That said though, their drive to preserve nature could be seen by some as good, and ultimately I think they lean more towards good on the spectrum rather than evil or directly in the middle. But at the end of the day, they're not going to go out of their way just to go battle evil. Unless, of course, that evil happens to be infringing upon their habitat. That said though, you are totally free to change any of that to fit into your setting or to fit the role you want this creature to be in. And I mean, they are all unique beings, so just because the majority of their race has a certain outlook doesn't necessarily mean every single one of them do. That could actually be a point of contention. Maybe there's one of them that has aligned itself with the party and wants to get involved in this overall struggle, and there are other Saguaro Sentinels out in the desert that just don't want anything to do with it. Convincing them to join up with your players and fight back against whatever this evil force in your game is could be a fun little bit of role-playing. Even just an individual Saguaro Sentinel could prove to be a very valuable ally to the party. If they show themselves to be respectful of nature and maybe they help the Sentinel stave off some band of orcs that's been rampaging through the lands and thus destroying part of the cacti forest, the Saguaro Sentinel could act as sort of a way station for your players. Because you have to consider, they're out in the middle of the desert, that's their home, so any travelers passing through are going to be low on resources or at least conserving what resources they have. As a master of nature, I'm sure they would be completely able to refill canteens using water they had stored up within themselves. Plus, a small grove, even if it's a desert grove, that is guarded by a saguaro sentinel is a much safer place to rest than on the side of a sand dune. That does raise the question though, is the party willing to drink desert trent pee in order to stave off dehydration? I think ultimately you'll usually find the answer is yes. So we're talking about using this creature as an ally, but I'm sure you're probably looking at the art which is provided by the source book, which is awesome by the way, and thinking to yourself, this thing looks terrifying. A good way to paint them in a gentler light where they don't necessarily have to be the enemy is to cover them with some flowers. That may sound funny, but seriously, saguaro cactuses in the real world actually grow these giant white flowers that are quite pretty on the top of all of their stalks. Simply by describing that this thing has these flowers growing on it will immediately put that idea in your players' minds that maybe these creatures have a gentler side. Plus, presenting the saguaro sentinel in this way will make its wrath just that much more terrifying. It's always the quiet ones. I seriously have so much love for these monsters, and whether you plan on using them just as a one-off encounter, or as a party ally or quest giver even, 
I think that they have a great place in pretty much any game that has a desert location. So hopefully you enjoyed listening to me talk about these pokey protectors, and if you plan on unleashing these potentially gentle giants on your players, please let me know about it in the comments below. If you want to use my 5th edition conversion for these monsters, you can find that in the description. And if you like what I do here and you want to see some more monsters, please feel free to subscribe here on YouTube. I have at least one new video every week, and I'm thinking next week we'll probably talk about some more elementals. I feel like that's all I've been talking about lately is elementals, but there's just so many cool elementals that I really want to share with you guys. Let me know if you're getting tired of it, but right now, as it stands, the plan is to talk about another type of elemental next week. And I think you're really going to like it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next week.